Thank you, and welcome again to World Coma Day. It's an honor to present this year, and the topic I've been given is why can't we define coma, and does it matter? So, like any good um, academic, first thing I do when I want to find a definition is I, I look to sort of stayed resources. And, and this is the dictionary definition, that coma is a state of deep unconsciousness that lasts for a prolonged or indefinite period and is caused especially by severe injury or illness. There's a couple of problems with this, though. Why, Like deep unconsciousness, how exactly are we measuring unconsciousness? In order to call unconsciousness deep, I need to have some sort of an agreed-upon measure. Not only that, there's another part of this, prolonged or indefinite period. I don't know what prolonged means. Is that a day, a week, a month, a year? And why can't coma be short-term? Why can't we be in a coma for a short period of time? Like for me, if I'm unconscious for even five minutes, I think that's about when I want my family to start taking notice and moving on things. Also, there's severe injury. Well, this is either an obvious part of the definition that doesn't need to be included, or it's a useless part. Because does that mean the injury that caused the initial unconscious need, needed to be severe? Or can you have, start out with like, a non-severe injury or illness that progresses and becomes more severe over time, in which case I'm, I think that's kind of, kind of uh, a given. So it's hard to really jump into that one. A lot of people turn to Wikipedia these days, and the Wikipedia definition is that coma is a deep state of prolonged, again, we see that, unconsciousness in which a person cannot be awakened fails to respond normally to painful stimuli or light, uh, a lighter sound, and um, does not have a normal sleep-wake cycle. It was just the holidays as I'm recording this, and I think we all have at least one drunk uncle or drunk friend story from our past, and that person cannot be awakened. Certainly not with abnormal, there was, certainly they would have an abnormal pain response abnormal sleep-wake cycles. And in terms of prolonged, gosh, again, here we're stuck with, is it five minutes, one hour? Is it the full eight hours? Or if they're still on the couch, does that count as coma? And um, here again, the definition doesn't really work. Another source of definition that's becoming increasingly popular is stat pearls. As an editor, I'm not a fan of stat pearls for references, but it certainly is nice for a quick source of information. Sat Pearl says, coma is a state of deep unconsciousness, an eyes closed unresponsive state, and it's usually transitory. Now, in addition to not being overly precise, it's transitory to what? Like what's the next stage? Do they mean transitory to getting worse, getting better? And how long are they in this stage? So I didn't really like that one. I've been studying coma for a long time, and I do like to include in my definition that somehow coma has the complete inability, the, the person in coma has the complete inability to perceive and respond to internal or external stimuli. I can tell you for years I've been using this, and I'm probably going to have to abandon it soon, and that's a good thing. Because we're getting more and more ideas on how we can look at the brain in its different states of consciousness. You're looking, of course, at an EEG tracing and at um, advanced MRI imaging techniques where we can see the brain. We can see the person's brain responding even though we can't see outward manifestations. We can't see them wiggling a finger or holding two fingers or, or um, responding to commands, but there's still some brain activity, and this is unlocking wonderful secrets. This led to uh, a recent, um, recent change in how we're thinking about coma, 
and disorders of consciousness, where we're looking at at definitions that are based on phenotypes and endotypes. Now, phenotypes are clinical manifestations and endotypes are pathobiologic mes- biological mechanisms. And these can be confusing. And I know we've got a number of, of people from different uh, walks of life here. So I'm going to give you sort of the, the easy version of understanding phenotype and endotype and how that can play in to how we're eventually going to be defining coma. So I'm going to use um, classic case studies that everybody knows about. Here's someone. This is Sleeping Beauty. If I were to look at her outward exam, I would give her a phenotype called coma. She is unconscious. She's unresponsive. Who knows what, how long prolonged and severity and things like that. Here's another person, similar age. This is Snow White. If I were to look at Snow White, she's unresponsive, eyes closed state, fits the definition of coma. But if we look at their endotypes, if we look at the pathobiological mechanisms, we can see some differences. So Sleeping Beauty, based on her emergency department notes, she is in an induced coma. What really happened to her was she poked her finger and she's such a little princess that it was so traumatic for her that, oh my God, she just couldn't handle it when she was being sutured. And the emergency department team decided they were going to sedate her so they could complete the suturing process. Well, this is is something we might think of as an induced coma. That would be her endotype. Snow White, very, very different. Snow White had a bilateral thalamic ischemic stroke, something we call an artery of Percheron that feeds her thalamus. This is probably caused because she had stroke risk factors that included dehydration from an apple. Apples are a natural diuretic. And also there was an illicit narcotic that she was given in the apple. And this caused her to go into her coma. So these are two different types of coma underlying, although they look the same outward. And this is where we bring rise to the the thought that endotype will drive treatment. So we look at Sleeping Beauty. She's in an induced coma. Our treatment for her is going to be very different than our treatment for Snow White. After we finish suturing her finger, we're going to allow those drugs to wear off And then for some reason unknowns to me, we're going to allow some random stranger to come into her room and kiss her without her permission, and she's going to wake up. Snow White, on the other hand, she's in a functional coma. Remember, she had a thalamic stroke. This was caused, brought on by by medication, um, street drugs, dehydration. So for her, we're going to put her in a hyperbaric oxygen chamber. This was the treatment back in the 70s. Hyperbaric oxygen chamber for a full year and let all of her brain start to repair itself. Then for some unknown reason, we are going to allow a random stranger to come in, give her a kiss without her permission, and then she will wake up. Maybe this is something we did back in the 70s. Both of these people had outward phenotypes of coma, but their endotypes were different. Now, I made up these stories, and I made up those endotypes because we don't know what the endotypes are going to be called. But I didn't make up the basis for them. This was a brilliant group of scientists, some of whom you've heard speak here at uh, World Coma Day 2023, and some who have spoken in the past, and they've come up with ACCESS, which is the Advanced Classification of Consciousness Endotypes. This is probably going to be spoken on a little bit more of uh, throughout the day, and I just want to cover it just briefly. Tier 1 of endotype is just the phenotype, and Tier 2 is where we start looking at imaging, like that's going to have CT, MRI, Imaging that's available pretty much everywhere, even in low-resource economic areas. 
tier two of endotyping is going to start adding. This is where we're going to see advanced imaging techniques. We're going to see um, things like the AVCM put in there. We're going to see different ways that we can understand the pathobiological mechanisms that led to their coma. Tier three, that's a dream. We don't know yet. This is the uh, figure from that paper I just showed you. And there's an infinite number of possibilities of phenotyping for tier three. And that's the excitement of the future. So why can't we define it? Well, I don't think that we can't define it. I think we couldn't define it. But now we're all headed in the same direction. We're understanding that coma is not just one thing and we're working together. I think we can define it. And I think that definition is going to evolve over the next few years. The next part is, I think in many ways, a little bit more exciting. As a nurse, this is like, okay, once we have a definition of coma, does it matter? And the answer is both yes and no. Scientifically, it absolutely matters. I showed you how if we understand phenotyping, we can see how it really makes a difference, right? If we know the phenotype, we're going to change the treatment. But to understand the other half, we got to turn to my mom. And this is my mom, who's a lot like your mom. She has no medical training. She's retired. She's not a research scientist, and she's never studied coma. But if I were to ask her what a coma is, she could give me a definition right away. And I think that's true with most of us. We know people who are not in healthcare, they don't need a dictionary definition. They need a working definition. They need something that they can understand. We need the definition so that we can understand how to relate to them. At some point, we're gonna be standing at that bedside. We're gonna be looking at that patient. We're going to have family ask us the hardest question we've got. When will they wake up? Right now, we don't know the answer. But we're working on it. And so as we develop our skills to getting a better definition, to understanding phenotypes of coma, it does matter. We're going to be able to answer that question. That's what I have to share with you today. I'm going to be hanging out um, and answering questions throughout. You can also reach me at diy.olson at gmail.com. It has been my sincere honor to present at World Coma Day 2023. Thank you.